Okay, welcome everyone. James Park from jamesparkhealth.com, and uh, thought I'd do a quick video analysis of Robert Rock. Uh, Robert Rock is a uh, European tour player. Been on tour for about ten years or so, uh, and I've followed his career closely. I used to, uh, I used to work just down the road from him, just north of Birmingham in England, in uh, in Lichfield, while I was doing my uh, PGA training many many years ago. And uh, yeah, I followed his career followed his career closely and uh, he's probably fa most famous for taking Tiger down in the desert a few years ago in, uh, in Dubai. Um, I think he was paired up with him in the last round and uh, you know, went toe to toe with him and, and, and beat him, which uh, not many people do. So, uh, great player, but great golf swing. And, you know, when I'm teaching people uh, both online uh, you know, when people are sending me swings in from uh, around America or, or Europe or somewhere, and uh, or, or if someone comes and sees me uh, for a personal lesson out at Stonebridge, then uh, you know, Rocky is uh, is a guy I, I sometimes pull up because he's uh, he just does things very well, very you know, technically very very good. Um, all the right lines, all the right angles, it keeps his inclination to the ground, got great posture. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's slow it down and, and take a look at it. So um, if we draw some lines here, so draw a line there, little box for where his head is, uh, touch line there, so it keeps his backside on that line and one of the things he does so well is, is like I say, how he keeps his inclination to the ground, right? Don't like to use the term spine angle. The spine angle is always changing. It's tilting. It's extending. Um, you know, it's turning, obviously. So, uh, you know, let's use the inclination to the ground. So it's almost like his forehead is pressing against that, that box, isn't it? You know, he keeps it in there. You know, there's actually a great, um, Training aid, which I uh, which I got a few weeks ago, which I, I'm using with a few students, uh, called the Bender Stick. Um, and it's just a you know it's just a, there's a little there's a little base down here. It's like this uh, uh, this rod you can move, and there's a there's a there's, there's a little ball on the end, right? So I just get it and I set it up and I say, right, well, put your forehead on it, and uh, and hit some little shots, but keep your forehead on it through the shot. And you can see how Rocky does that very well. Um, all the way down through and past impact. Um, but with regards to his golf swing, uh, posture, very good. Uh, you know, one of the things we look at in, in posture is we draw a line down there from just uh, where his armpits are, kind of. You know, a lot of the pros, with regards to their posture, that line generally comes down and kind of dissects their knees. So, you know, he's maybe got his knees a little, legs a little straighter than a lot of other pros. Um, and one of the things he does a little bit different as well, especially for a modern swinger, right? I know he's seen Sean Foley uh, for a few lessons, so they're all kind of singing off the same hymn sheet, right? Uh, but one of the things he does a little bit differently is he takes his hands back a little bit straighter than a lot of others, right? A lot of others are taking them, their hands inward more than Rocky. Now, now they're still moving inwards, right? Don't get me wrong, these hands are still moving inwards, but they're just a little straighter than a lot of other pros, right? If we pull up, um, we pull up someone like someone who does it ex excessively, someone like maybe Charlie Wee, right? His hands are moving inwards a lot more in his takeaway. So his left arm's a little deeper. You know, he would have got a lot more sort of turn in his pivot by this point. You can see how his arm's a lot more deeper across his body. Uh, whereas Rocky's just a little straighter there, isn't he? With his hand path uh, and his left arm. Uh, but nevertheless, still got great connection under his left armpit. Uh, and you can see there, you know, his, his left arm. And like I say, Hands have still moved inward, right? So don't go, don't go back, don't go, don't go to the range and think that your hands have to move straight along your toes. They don't. They're moving inwards, right? His hands are moving inwards this way. Okay. 
Um, but you can see just a little different to uh, to someone else who who, who swings in this uh, in this modern style of swinging, if you like. Um, but yeah, other thing other things uh, that he does well, uh, like I said, connection under his left arm, and look at look at his legs already. So you know we know going back, we want the right leg to straighten a little bit, left leg to bend, uh, kind of sitting into that left leg a little bit more. But already, you know, he's only halfway through his swing. He's already straightened his right leg, right? So you can see as he gets up to the top, right leg straightened, so the right hip can move higher than the left hip, uh, left leg bent. Um, look how well he's kept his connection under underneath his right arm. That's superb. And, and you know, little one of the things we do as pros at the top is we kind of look at left arm, shoulder plane, club face and you can see you know one of the similarities all good pros tend to have and it's not set in stone i mean there's a lot of great players who have a slightly open club face you know hogan had a cut left wrist slightly open face uh you know dustin johnson who hits the ball and while has a very bowed left wrist and a very closed club face so it's not set in stone right but you know if you're looking at if you're looking at uh what like so Tiger does or someone like Rocky, you know, all, all of that's kind of matched up at the top. Another another good uh, little point uh, from all you amateurs out there would be, well, that, that's where he's going to try and hit it, right? Well, another good point when coming down would be, rather than come down and try and hit the ball that way, try and come down and hit the ball to the right a little bit. So you're trying to come down and push it. Now, you watch what happens with his hands and you watch what happens with the club head right at the start of the swing down so you watch how his hands are going to come back down this way right and his club head's just going to drop down this way right so there's going to be a big pressure build up in that first pad of the first joint of the trigger finger on the right hand and you know, a lot of amateurs, once they get up to this position, they don't gather the club. And what I mean by that is it's a little bit slower at the top. Okay, you have to try and gather it. Right, so we, we want some, we want some momentum to get up to the top. A slower gathering of the club head. Right, building up that pressure in the first joint of the trigger finger. And then you can see his, his left arm now is coming down this way. His left arm is going to get back down in front of it. So, just the idea, you know, and I find just when I put when I plant that image in, in some of the some of the people's minds who I teach, well, don't try and hit it straight. Try and feel once you get up to the top there, try and feel as though you can hit it. You're gonna try and hit it out there to the right, trying to push it. Okay, then the top of the swing generally changes a little bit. Instead of getting to the top in a good way and just yanking it down a little steep. You can see how the club head gathers, falls down, pressure builds up in the trigger finger of the right hand, and then it gets on plane beautifully coming down. And you can see how his left arm gets out in front of him there, right? Shaft and shaft coming through the right arm at impact. Club and right arm are all on one plane. Okay, that's very important. And then post impact. Arm straight, arm straight, arm straight, arm straight, all the way up to the top, and then your elbows bend a little bit just to finish. Okay, uh, but good little point, right? Try and hit it, try and push it off to the right. You hit it straight, and you pushed it, then that's acceptable, right? You have the club face one degree close to the path. The ball's just going to come back round here. And a nice little draw. Whereas a lot of people just jerk it and yank it straight down from the top and it just gets the shaft a little stick, right? Um, angle, right? And this is, uh, this is a really good, uh, camera angle, right? We'll do the same sorts of things. Put some lines there. Uh, and another point as well, looking at it from this, looking at it from this angle, notice how shaft is lean forward. Right, so try and get your left arm and the shaft in, in a straight line at the start, kind of getting this impact fix. All right, so you 
kind of emulating impact. Uh, and also look at his body, lower body. Feet flared out, all right? Knees flared out, all right? So it's almost like you're sitting on a horse. You're going to feel like your knees are pushing outwards and your knees are flat. Your knees are flared out and your toes are flared out, okay? And then from that position, what we can do is, as you start back that way, right? Start with a little bit of pressure in the left leg as you're doing it. Right, and another important point is your club is going to cock, your club is going to hinge the more your right arm folds. Right, so you know, I, I sometimes go on YouTube and watch some videos, you know, watch what other people are putting out there, and there's still people talking about trying to get your right arm, your right elbow away from your body i mean that's just bad that's bad coaching you know for me the the right arm should just roll the right arm here upper arm should just roll up your torso okay the more it folds here the more the wrists are going to cock okay and you can see how right as the right leg straightens how it's actually moved away from this line Okay, so there's no lateral movement. There's never any lateral movement. Okay, it's lateral movement, but we always want it going towards the target, not away from the target. And you know, just talking about lag, you know, if that's his, that's his wrist hinge, that's his wrist cock or wrist hinge, whatever you want to call it, going back. Look at how he's lagged it there. Now, there's actually more wrist cock coming down. Look, that's awesome. Right, that's lag. Now, once you've developed that lag, right, you're sitting into your left leg. Okay, we get to, and, and, and this is why we have the left foot flared out a little bit so you can sit into your left leg. Right, sit into your left leg, drag the club down, and never try and throw the club in. This is what a lot of people try and, and look out. Okay, that right arm is very connected to the to the body, right? So get yourself a tea peg, get an old glove, put it under your right arm. That's a great exercise. Just get it under that right arm, keep it there for the whole swing. Okay, okay, his right arm's attached to his torso coming down, keeping his lag. We're never trying to throw the club head. The club head is gonna release through the centrifugal force, okay? So he's still sitting into his left leg, he's dragging the club down, he's not throwing it with his right hand, because when you throw it with your right hand, okay, you don't achieve this bent right wrist. Now this bent right wrist here at impact, combined with a flat left wrist, is so important, so important. But also notice how his hands are directly underneath his left shoulder. Okay, left shoulder is the centre of the circle, centre of the swing. We need our hands down underneath that at impact. Okay, and if we could zoom in, camera's not, camera quality is not too good, but if we zoomed in here, you'd really see that first joint of his trigger finger really driving against that handle there. And you can see the stress. You can see the stress in the shaft there as he takes his divot, right? But after he's hit it, arm straight, arm straight, arm straight, arm straight. As he's come through, his, his hips have moved forward and upwards. Okay, that facilitates the extension and the side tilting backwards now. But it's arm straight, arm straight, arm straight. And then his elbows just fall to finish. Okay, another good point as well is just how balanced he's on this, he's on this left foot. No roll. No jerkiness, no daintiness, as Homer Kelly would say, the golfing machine. Okay, guys, it's a great model to follow, Robert Rock. Uh, go look him up on YouTube, um, and then uh, download him on TV One app. So when you when you analyse your own swing, you can put him up next to you. All right, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and I'll get to them when I can. Cheers.